All right, guys, welcome back. Uh, this is another video uh, where I'm covering more information about the server that I built. In this video, I wanted to cover some of the software that I had installed, the OS, and some of the configuration options that I chose. So as you know, I got a Mac Mini mid-2011 server. I actually bought it used. I bought it online on eBay. Probably paid a little too much for it, but uh, that's what happens. That's a cost of uh, doing business when you want it uh, more with your heart, I guess, than with your head sometimes. Or in this case, I had a different goal, so that was more important than just, I guess, a small savings on the front end. But um, really where I'm going with this, let me just wake up the screen share for the server. What I have on my iMac back here is I made full screen um, screen sharing. The reason why I guess it's boxed out instead of uh, taking up the entire screen is because it's a headless unit. The server does not have a monitor, does not have a keyboard or a mouse directly attached to it, so I believe it defaults to this uh, ratio without, you know, uh, a display connected to it. I guess that's a normal thing. Anyway, I sort of blocked out any uh, kind of distraction so we could just focus on the software itself on the server. So for the server I chose, um, well, let me let me backtrack a little bit. It came with El Capitan um, installed, you know, pre-installed on it from the previous owner. He had wiped it out, I suppose, and installed El Capitan. Um, excuse me, not El Capitan, Sierra. And what happened was is that I received it. And when I had received it, uh, Hi Sierra had just come out, so I said, you know what, it's not really old enough where the computer is going to just necessarily fly through the, this, the uh, OS, and it's also not new enough to, to be entirely current. I mean, it's mostly current, but there's an even newer option that could probably, um, you know, benefit me because of, you know, APFS and, and all the new uh, additions in High Sierra. So I figured I'd install that, so I tried that. And I also tried rolling back the system through a net... Uh, boot install, I guess, from Apple servers for Lion Server, which was the original uh, OEM, I guess, install that was made for that computer. Well, that just seemed too antiquated for me, and High Sierra actually seems to have some issues possibly with the graphics. Um, not necessarily that the graphics are, there's a problem with the physical graphics on the unit, um, but I guess the drivers built into High Sierra just aren't mated very well. And maybe they'll get out the kinks, maybe they won't. <clears throat> I put in a bug report with Apple um, at their feedback website, but we'll see what happens with that. Anyway, I needed something a little bit more reliable. I have this computer behind me. It's capable of running up to El Capitan officially, um, but I've been running Mavericks for several years now because it seems to be not entirely stable, but uh, relatively stable. It also seems to perform decently well on this older hardware. This is from 2009. The server is from 2011, and it is faster. But I kind of wanted that cross-device um, compatibility as much as possible. So I chose the same OS, something I was familiar with, um, something that would um, mate well with the device that I use the most. So I chose uh, Mavericks for that device. Um, it's only a couple years newer than the device hardware itself, you know, by design. Uh, so it runs uh, pretty smoothly. I uh, can't say there are no flaws, but uh, by this point it's a pretty matured OS. So I installed that on the server. Um, it actually is a dual boot. It has High Sierra still on it, just in case I want to log into that. But mostly it's running uh, Mavericks 10.9.5 with, I guess, all the latest patches. And now we can talk more about the configuration of the device, obviously. So what I did was I made one admin account. Uh, I played around with the idea of having like a standard account also on there, but I just decided to have one admin account. Within that, I set up a few different um, server uh, sharing options. So uh, it's not an official, it's not running macOS server or the server app or anything like that, but it's functioning as a server. So it's sharing um, files. It's also sharing its screen when I need to log in remotely, you know, on the local network that is. Um, although I could probably do back to my Mac or set up some sort of, uh, you know, outlet through port of the router to access it externally. I'd rather not uh, involve those um, technologies. So I'm just doing it for the local network. And basically, I have it set up so that I can do, uh, you know, screen sharing locally on my network. I can share files. 
and I can also share the printer. Um, so I'm going to go over that a little bit with you today. Uh, let's take a look at the screen, see if I can pull it up a little bit here. So I'm going to try um, to see if I can do a screen capture um, on this computer so that I can give you a little bit of better demonstration. Uh, if not, I'll try to do one of these selfie uh, demos, but preferably I'll be able to, you know, take this screen uh, recording and pop it onto this video. So let's get started. Hey guys, we're just going to switch from my local desktop to the shared uh, desktop from my server. I'm going to close this out just so I can give you a little bit of a, an overview before we examine that. So here's my uh, desktop. You can see it's has the default Mavericks um, wave right here as the background. I have my network drive, which has two partitions on it. Um, this is for my video and music, and this is just a blank partition that I can use for just extraneous things. I pretty much just have it separated so that, uh, you know, for organizational purposes. Anyway, I cut out a bunch of the fluff at the bottom so that I can just keep a nice focused desktop nice focus dock um, just for utility. This is for connecting to you know a remote server I suppose for web hosting things like that. This is for text editing. Um, this is AMPS that is my uh, client that I use for uh, web hosting if I need to do local testing or local network testing. We can go into more depth about AMPS in a future video but we'll just leave that alone for now. Obviously, system preferences, so I can make adjustments to the system quickly. Disk utility, if I need to format a disk, unmount, remount a disk that's still connected, things like that. Um, or partition. Google Chrome, sort of my go-to desktop browser. Safari is excellent, um, the new versions that is, but back on Mavericks, not so much. Um, App Store, just leave around just for updates and various things, and obviously the Finder, um, so we can navigate the computer's uh, directories. Here, instead of a downloads folder, I have my applications folder. Um, this is just a convenient spot, so I mean, I obviously can go through Finder or through Spotlight. Um, but I like having my applications folder right there. I don't really have a need for a downloads folder because I just set everything to, you know, pretty much download straight to the desktop. All right, upwards and onwards, we are going to check out the configuration of the computer. So, like I said. Uh, I had played around with the idea of having a standard account. I went with just one admin account, and that's what we're logged into right now. If we go into System Preferences, and then we check out my sharing settings, you'll see the computer name that I set. You'll see, actually, uh, the format in which I can access it uh, remotely, or that is, around the, the local network. Uh, you can see three services are enabled on the left-hand side, and those are, as mentioned, screen sharing, file sharing, and printer sharing. So we're going to go in a little bit more detail for each one. So starting off with screen sharing. Screen sharing, I have enabled it only for me, only for the main account, single account that is, so that no one else can log in. Um, left everything pretty much defaulted except setting it as, uh, you know, only having me uh, as, the, as the permissible share of the screen, shall we say. All right, um, we're going to go into file sharing. File sharing I have enabled. Usually comes defaulted with at least one shared folder that's available, I guess, to everyone or at least other user groups or at least to the admin administrator user group. What I decided to do after experimenting with the system a little bit was to remove it entirely because it seemed that I didn't have to explicitly share folders seeing as I was logging in with an administrator um, level account. I was given access to my hard disk known as, in this case, Maverick Server, that's what I named it. And I'm given access to pretty much everything mounted in here, or rather everything mounted uh, on this account. And then we also have, I also have rather, um, access to my admin folder, of course, because that's just the subdirectory of the main uh, install hard disk. So with that being said, I just left off all permissions for external users. I don't need to share it amongst anyone else because I'm the only one accessing it. Um, if that changes in the future, of course, I can put in special file permissions by just clicking the plus sign, adding some folders, a folder or multiple folders, and hitting the plus sign to choose either individual users or user groups. 
or everyone, of course. There are certain permissions for everyone, I believe, uh, at least for certain folders, certain directories. So that's uh, something to mention. Options. I did make an alteration here. By default, I believe these are checked off, both of them, the Samba and AFP. So SMB I unchecked um, because I, I was having some issues, I guess, connecting, disconnecting, uh, file transfer, files opening, things like that. I was also experimenting around with uh, remote backups using Time Machine. Uh, so I was trying to sort of simulate a uh, time capsule kind of thing, but just my own you know, network network uh, accessible storage via my Mac Mini server. That didn't work out quite as well as I had anticipated, so I just went back to a local Time Machine backup system and disabled SMB. And since I'm pretty much working between uh, Mac computers and because they're not running the latest OS, AFP is seems to be more than enough. So I'm just going to hit done. All right, we slide that out of the way, and we're going to go into printer sharing now. And so on printer sharing, I have this enabled. You can see this is my trusty workhorse of a laser jet. And here I've denied just anyone you know, access so that if a guest logs in um, or if someone else uh, who, who's in the household logs in to their computer, sees the printer, and they decide to print something without clearing it, of course, or if they decide to you know, pull a prank or they possibly, you know, print too many pages accidentally. Excuse me, it would ask for the login credentials, for my login credentials. So that sort of limits it, which is nice because I can control who prints uh, and what, what gets printed. So that's kind of a nice granular control that I have. But I'm able to do it from all types of uh, Mac devices, Apple devices, it seems. Um, with the exception of AirPrint, things that require AirPrint, I believe there is some sort of app I can get from the App Store or, or elsewhere. Probably just costs a few bucks, and I can set it up, simulate an Air Printer, and then print from iPhone, iPad, things like that. But I didn't really find the need for it yet, so I'm just going to leave that off for now. All right, so I'm going to hit Show All. Uh, Energy Saver. As you can see, we have two different tabs. We have Power. Computer is said to never sleep, so that it can constantly be accessible, even though it has wake for network access. Uh, this was what I chose. Uh, I selected all of these, put hard disk to sleep, wake for network access, and start up automatically after a power failure. I don't know how that, uh, what kind of role this plays since I have a UPS, but uh, we dig I digress. Display sleep I have set to one minute. There's no display connected, and I really, there's no real, I guess, rhyme or reason. I just figured I would lock that down. Um, as much as possible. So we go into the UPS, and the UPS has a little, if you go up to the upper portion and click on it, you can see, UPS has a little status indicator up here in this bar, and it can show me the percentage charge it has. But I also have, <coughs> excuse me, the UPS settings over here set computer to never sleep, and then display to sleep very quickly. It shows the current charge, and this is the checkbox that enables this menu. All right, so, and for shutdown options, I did configure this. Shutdown options, it shows the UPS model, which we talked about before. It's not really just a 1350, it's a CP1350 PFC LCD, technically. This, I guess it stands for cyber power. Um, shut down the computer after using the UPS battery for. This was, I guess, an arbitrary choice. It seemed reasonable, so I chose 10 minutes. And then I also checked this off, shut down the computer when the UPS, is, UPS battery level is below 50%. I assumed whichever one would come first would be executed, and these both seem like reasonable choices. The middle one seems superfluous, so I left it blank. I hit done. Hit show all, see if there's anything else really necessary uh, to go over. Anything important? Not really. All right. All right, guys. Uh, just wanted to uh, close out the video for you, meet you face to face, if you would. Um, Hopefully you didn't fall asleep during that whole expose, exposition of my server configuration. I just went over the basics. Uh, it seemed maybe really simple, but when I was going through it, I had to experiment to tweak it just to get it uh, how I wanted it. There's still It's still an ongoing project, but this is where it's at. I wanted to fill you in. Anyway, uh, until next time, 
Don't forget to pursue your passions, pursue what makes you happy. Uh, leave a comment if you have something to say about how I've set it up. If you have any suggestions possibly that could be helpful. Uh, don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed the video and subscribe if you want to see more. Uh, catch you in the next one.